This CNC for newbie, new car machine, has been an absolutely fantastic machine in the shop. And several years ago, I actually put on this type of a waste board with the tape and glue method, and it's worked extremely well. But over the years, it has started to show a little bit of wear, and quite frankly, I have learned a lot over the last few years on what works and what doesn't work. And this is what I mean. On the most recent project, you can see where these boards raised up about one millimeter. The reason? These screws right here pushed it up. And that's what it's all about today, is putting in a very efficient spoil board that is going to work now, in the future, several more years before I have to touch it again. The bolts that I used for this were these right here. And these were actually from the plumbing department and they slip right in here and they work absolutely fantastic and the good thing is when they slipped in they wouldn't turn beyond that made it a perfect opportunity to be able to tighten them and be able to secure it in place and this worked extremely well so what I'm doing is taking all the lessons learned over the past number of years now and applying them to this new spoil board now, I really have a very short list on all the things that I want to be able to accomplish. And the most important thing is I don't want to use any expensive T-Track. The old T-Track system that I have where I made it and cut it into the edge of the board worked fantastic. And there's no need to reinvent the wheel on that. So we could cross that one off the list. The other thing I want to be able to do is to be able to do the tiling. Oftentimes, I will do projects that are much bigger than the size of the CNC machine. And I want to be able to slide that material all the way through. And if you have a permanent type guide rail at the bottom on your X axis, well, that's not going to work. So that has to be removable. And the other thing is when you surface the uh, waste board, you don't want to have a ridge down at the bottom because that's going to create an uneven surface. So that's a very big priority. Now the next thing I want to be able to screw in this auxiliary waste board into the original one. That's going to hold a lot better and I don't have to take a chance on the glue and the tape method breaking loose and causing a problem as I have in the past. Although it hasn't happened very often, once is too many, especially if you're doing a project that you really don't want to mess up. And then this fourth one is really what I had just said. I want to be able to surface that entire area so that it's completely flat and I don't have any type of ridges at all. So again, it's a very simple list. If I can achieve all of these goals and build this new auxiliary waste board to meet these goals, then I will have a waste board that will last many years to come and to a lot of different projects. The first step is to remove this old auxiliary waste board. And you can see how the glue and the tape method, quite frankly, held extremely well. Some of these boards are very, very difficult to be able to remove. Now, there were a couple of boards that actually had come loose, and I screwed them down to the waste board. So why did these waste boards break loose from the glue and the tape method? Well, quite frankly, it was my fault. When I used the bump stops and would screw those into the waste board or other type of hold down methods, there were times when those screws, just as I had shown you a couple of minutes ago, would lift up and break that glue and tape joint loose. And that would cause a problem. So we're going to eliminate that today. But for those of you that are skeptical about the glue and tape method and how well that it holds, just take a look at how difficult these boards are to be able to remove from this waste board. So if it wasn't for my fault and messing up how I secured the project down, this method probably would work for many years to come. But it's time for an upgrade. Once all the boards and the tape have been removed, it's time for a good cleaning. So I've taken out the shop vacuum and getting all of the dust and dirt off of this waste board that I possibly can. Also, I'm taking a putty knife and being able to make sure that it's completely flat. The auxiliary waste board that I had on here was designed so that the screws went into that rather than into this original base. And that was by design. I wanted to be able to protect this base so I did not have to replace it on a regular basis. Well, here we go. The original waste board now is completely flat and clean. I took the putty knife and smoothed off these little holes so that, again, this waste board now is perfectly flat. Well, it goes with a little bittersweet. 
I'm glad to see the old waste board gone, even though it served well for many years, but at the same time, I also welcome putting on this brand new waste board. Now these old layout lines, I'm really not going to use those anymore because we're going to have brand new lines. I also want to clearly identify the home position for the CNC machines and I'm going to use some guidelines actually created by the CNC machine itself to be able to do the layout for this new board. I've turned on the machine now and the first step is to home the machine. I'm going to use this CNC machine actually to create the layout lines necessary to put on this new waste board. One of the considerations is the slope of this bracket. I can't use an absolute total distance on the waste board because that bracket itself would be in the way. I home the machine and this is the exact point for my home position. So from there, I just manually moved with the machine running and formed a straight line all the way across. And then over here, I went to this point right here and went all the way down. You can see that I could still go a little bit more to the right before it hit the stops, but there's really no need to because of this right here. So that is going to be my limiting factor. So I also marked a line using the router, manually moved it, and marked my corners. So up at the very top, you can see I marked that corner. And I started to be able to come all the way down 10 millimeters to the right. And that's really entirely too close. So I stayed and used this X as my top corner. And then I did the same thing on the other side as well. The most important corners that I need is this section up here so I can do my layout. And I'm not gonna go any further to the rear than what you see back there. Really no need for it. At this point, all the necessary lines are marked, especially the corners, and that's the most important part. The other key factor is this line verifies that this original wasteboard was 100% flat. This line that's created all the way around the entire wasteboard is very consistent. There is really no need to surface the new wasteboard because this is very flat. And quite frankly, after I measured it, it's within 30 thousandths of a millimeter. I want to show you this with the machine at the XY0 home position. Look at where the router is in relationship to the frame. And that's because of the placement of this little limit switch right here. Now if I wanted to, I could put in a little block and move that over. But quite frankly, this has never been an issue. This is a material that I'm going to use. It's a piece of scrap melamine that I had in the shop. I know most of you use the MDF or the medium density fiberboard. Well, that's basically what this is, but it has that covering on it. And this melamine is going to create a perfect surface. I want to be able to get all six pieces out of this wood. Now this is 97 inches long. All I'm going to do is divide it in two thirds. That will be close enough to be able to give me the length that I need. My original plan was to make the waste board 33 inches long on the Y axis. So with this board being 97 inches, you divide that by three, basically you're gonna get 32 inches and that's gonna work just fine. You also notice that I'm using a white pencil to be able to mark that. That makes it much easier to see on this black melamine. After measuring exactly the width that I needed, I took the boards over to the table saw and I'm cutting these five and one quarter inches wide. If you want to be able to duplicate this on your own CMC machine, make sure when you do the calculation, don't forget to subtract out the distance of those slots. In my case, those slots were a quarter inches wide, so don't forget to take that into account when you're cutting the final width of these boards. As the old saying goes, measure twice and cut once. So this is a rough layout of what it's going to look like once I place it on the CNC machine. As you can see, it looks like it's going to fit just fine. I have roughly one inch on this side and I have on the other side roughly that same one inch that I'm looking for. So that's exactly the way I want to have this laid out. I want to start now and mill each of these different boards. And the first step is I want to use the rabbit cut to be able to create this little slot that I need for those bolts to be able to slide into. Now on this new one, 
that slot is actually going to be thinner. It was too thick before and I want to make it where it's just wide enough to be able to support that bolt that goes into this slot. And I'm doing this on the router table. I can do it in one pass and I want to be able to now test it before I go to the next step. So I'm going to grab my bolt and I'll slide it in there and I'll slide these boards together just the way they're going to be on the table and I can see exactly how that's going to slide. Guys, that's perfect. That's what I wanted. This slot is just wide enough to be able to support the bolt and the rabbit cut at the bottom is just thin enough to be able to support this bolt without any excess movement. The next step on the milling operation is to cut this front and the back edge. I'm doing this a little bit different. I'm creating a rabbit cut on the front that's going to be 3 8 of an inch deep and 5 8 of an inch back. And that's going to give me enough room to be able to put the screws in to be able to hold it down. And those screws, of course, are going to be well out of the way of the bit on the router itself. Now, by the way, this is a 3 quarter inch straight bit that I'm using to be able to cut these slots. And yes, I am taking multiple passes to be able to get this through cut. Now I'm cutting this on both the front and the back. So now you can see how this is going to be milled. You can see the slot for the bolts at the bottom. And I'll do this on each of my six boards. Continue the milling operation. I'm using a four center bit and drilling down three eighths of an inch. This is going to support the screws that's going to be in the center of the boards. Also, before you guys ask, it was actually faster for me to mill these boards individually like this rather than trying to set it up and do it on the CNC machine. Sometimes the old-fashioned way is a little bit quicker than using the CNC machines. To install these boards, I have on the y-axis one reference line that was created with the CNC router and the second line on the x-axis is for that front edge. I'm using these bolts themselves to be able to act as the spacer. I want to make sure that these bolts will slide without any resistance whatsoever. And this is the best way to do it. So guys, no tape measure here. Use the bolts themselves to make sure that everything will slide smoothly. You have your reference line to make sure that everything is square and you're ready to be able to screw it in. Now please make sure you always, always pre-drill everything when you're dealing with the MDF. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem. So pre-drill and then you can put the screws in. Now I'm using a little bit different screw. This is a three-quarter inch wood screw that I'm holding this down. And when I screw this in, because I have the pilot holes, it will screw in very easily and it will screw down where the head of that screw is flat against the surface that I had rabbited earlier. Again, this is all designed to be able to keep that router bit out of the way when you're doing the projects. The same thing applies to these center holes. Because I used that forstner bit and actually drilled it down 3 8 of an inch, that way when I put in this 3 quarter inch wood screw, the head of that screw is actually flush with the bottom of this hole. This gives you 3 8 of an inch worth of material that you can surface this wasteboard over and over and not take a chance on running into one of these screws. This is a little bit unorthodox method, but it works extremely well and it keeps that screw out of the way of your router when it's cutting the projects. As you can see, I'm putting in the front two screws and I'm putting in the middle two screws at this point. That keeps everything aligned properly. I'll put in the screws on the back side once I'm completely finished. There won't be any additional alignment necessary. I'll just be able to pre-drill the holes and screw in the screws. Now with this finished, the next step would be to surface this. And there's really no need to because this is such a flat surface. So next, we're going to move on into the VCAR Pro and I'm going to show you how I set up the grid work. I think it's very important to be able to have the grid on there. My old waste board did not have it and I miss it. So we're going to do that today. I'm setting up a new project where the width is 30 inches by the height at 28. As far as the thickness, it doesn't really matter because we're not cutting very deep at all. I am using the zero on the surface and I'm using the XY zero at the bottom left corner. Now this is the actual size of the grid that I'm going to create on my new wasteboard. 
I'm going to come up to this icon right here. And this is the draw line. Now this is a poly line. It's a straight line. Make sure that your snap is on. And we're going to start right down here at the bottom left corner. And from there, I can just pull the line out. And I'm going to come all the way across on the X axis. And I can actually type in the 30 inches. And it will snap right to the end. From there, all I need to do is rotate this up. And I'm going to have a grid that's going to be 2 inches. So I'll type in the 2 inches and it'll snap again. So then I'll move back across again by 30 inches and I'll type in the 30 inches. It'll snap right to the end and I'll repeat this process until the grid is completely uh, done. Now this is one continuous line and it's the most effective toolpath that you can have. So there's no stopping and starting of the machine. It'll start at the bottom left hand corner and it will continue cutting this one continuous line until the grid pattern is completely finished. This actually goes fairly quickly but it is boring. So I'm going to skip ahead and finish this and then show you what it looks like when it's done. So here it is all finished and this is one continuous line from start to finish. And of course you can make yours any size that you need to to fit your machine. I want to click on the edit node and you can see the little black nodes popping all the way around this whole entire thing. But look down here at the bottom corner. There is one green dot. That's the start point. Let's move up now and create the uh, toolpath. We'll click on that little icon. Moves me over to the toolpath mode. And I want to use this right here. This is a profile toolpath. Of course we're going to start at the surface with zero. And this is going to be set at point. 03. Now right now I'm going to put it at point 1 just to be able to see it and show it to you. But I'm going to come back and I'll edit this because we're going to actually cut it at the point 03 uh, inches. Now this is using a 30 degree uh, V-bit and let's just calculate it. And when you calculate this you can see that there are no red lines. The red lines would be rapid movement and you see none. So this is the most efficient toolpath that you can have being that it's one continuous line all the way through the entire project. So at this point I want to edit this. We're going to put it in the point zero three and I'm going to save the toolpath and we're going to bring it out to the machine and get this cut. After home in the machine I moved it over to this dot. This is two inches on the X and the Y axis. That is going to be my bottom left corner and that's going to be the start point. I'm using the open build software to be able to run the CNC machine. Now remember this is set at 0 0.03 or 30 thousandths deep. That is not very deep at all. So this will be the true test to see if this surface is completely flat and smooth. So as this operation begins you can see how that line is being drawn. I want to give you a close up look and show you how consistent this is. This is looking absolutely fantastic and this is why I did not surface the uh, new auxiliary waste board. It just wasn't necessary. Now this 30 degree V-bit is doing an absolutely amazing job and cut at this depth basically it's really just scratching the surface. And that's all that's necessary. You just want to be able to see the line and be able to use it as your reference. There's really no need to dig down any deeper than this. Almost reaching the halfway point and the lines still look just as good as at the very beginning. So again this is extremely flat. If I surface this I don't think I could have done any better. When the machine reaches the top and it completes all the lines cut on the Y axis it'll turn and come down on the Y axis. And again this is one continuous line and yes it is cutting on top of the previous lines that were cut. That's okay. It doesn't really matter because you're not going to see it. This is cutting on the path. And again this is the most efficient way to be able to do this cut. And look at the results. This absolutely looks like one perfect line that's being drawn. And that was the goal of this whole operation. Now here's a real good close up of seeing it doing the carving. Where it's coming down on the Y axis and it's going to reach the bottom and make the turn. You're not even going to see the difference when you make that turn and carve on that line. When it duplicates it, not a big deal. And then it turns and continues up on the y-axis. 
And if you look, those lines are extremely consistent. This is an extremely flat surface. So we're near the end of this whole operation now. I also want you to take a look at the slot that was um, created by the bolts and the line next to it. They're perfectly parallel. And this is the reason why I use the CNC machine to create the original layout lines to begin with. So very, very important to be able to do this, use the machine for the layouts, and then you're going to have results like this. This turned out absolutely gorgeous. It's actually better than I had hoped for. Now these squares are two inches by two inches, and of course you can make them any size that you wish, but I think this is going to work out real well for me. It also identifies the bottom left hand corner, two inches uh, by two inches off of the uh, exact home position. So it's going to make setting up the CNC machine for the project extremely easy to do. Well, the new wasteboard is finished and it looks fantastic. Now what's going to surface the actual wasteboard, but I wanted to run the grid first just to see how level it was. If I can be within 30 thousandths of a millimeter, I'm good with that. That is level enough. I don't know if the surfacing bit would do a whole lot better. And by the time I surfaced it, sanded it a little bit, sealed it, I'd probably be within that 30 thousandths anyway. So I'm gonna let it go as it stands right now. But here's where I need your help. One of the goals was to be able to put on a fence also that would still allow me to do tiling. Well, I wanna have it up to you guys on what type of fence that I put in. So if you'll leave comments down below, tell me what you think is the best fence to put on to this new wasteboard. I'll make a video of that as well. So I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the upcoming video, and I can't wait to see what kind of comments that you have down in the description below on the fence that I should add to this brand new wasteboard. Until next time, bye-bye. See you real soon.